we do work in very sensitive habitats. We do need to keep that in mind, whether we are just choosing where to park our truck or whether we are planning out a job. We basically analyze that site for any potential environmental problems. Impacts to raptors, sage grouse, um, big game habitat is also important for looking for potential erosion problems, potential weed problems. It's basically an analysis of the impacts prior to actually making the decision to put those facilities in place. We have 21 stream locations, much like this one here, within the 45,000 acres of North Parachute Ranch. This is one of our 11 monitoring wells we have on the ranch. This is our Meadow Fork Air Station. Uh, we also have an air quality station up on top of the mountain. These monitoring programs will allow us to determine if there are any impacts now or in the future. One of the most important practices that Encanta utilizes on the ranch is voluntary on-sites. These are structured very similar to federal on-sites that we would do if it was federal surface or federal minerals, but these are all voluntary for Encanta because for the majority of the property we do own the surface and the minerals. In an on-site, basically, you get a crew of specialists, um, biologists like myself, the third-party contractors come along, people who specialize in weeds, stormwater, construction. We all go out as a group to propose locations for pipelines, for well pads, for permanent facilities, and we basically analyze that site for any potential environmental problems. Impacts to raptors, nesting habitat, um, sage grouse obviously is a big deal, um, big game habitat is also important for looking for potential erosion problems, potential weed problems that may exist or, or may come to exist in the future. So it's basically an analysis of the impacts prior to actually making the decision to put those facilities in place. This is an example of the map that I use when I'm analyzing potential locations. This is three years worth of annual field surveys for um, our biological resources, basically. You can see this dark red indicates where we actually have occupied sage grouse habitat. The lighter orange is potential habitat that is currently not occupied. Um, you can see active raptor nests with the recommended buffers from the Division of Wildlife around them. We've also got inactive nests mapped. Um, you can see where our very important riparian habitat is for Colorado River cutthroat trout. We also have division data on here. These blue and green areas indicate where we have big game winter range for mule deer and elk. After we've done the on-site, if we determine that that location or proposed facility is going to be too detrimental to the environment, that is when we have to go back to the drawing board and look for alternative locations. So we're still able to get at what we need to as far as development, but we also preserve that critical piece of habitat. In Canada does have sage grouse habitat on the NPR. We began doing surveys in 2005 looking for what was actually occupied habitat as opposed to what was potential habitat. We do have three active leks on the ranch and three more within a mile of the ranch boundary. Um, where we're standing now is a great example of the habitat that you would typically find grouse in on the ranch. A lek is basically an open area in the sagebrush, usually a ridge line or on a, a bald hilltop, where the males congregate in the spring and display to the females. That's where all of the breeding occurs for these populations. The lek locations we actually get from the Division of Wildlife. The division does the lek counts every spring. We in turn get that data through our cooperative partnerships with the division. So um, since 2006, we have been providing funding for the division's radio telemetry study of the sage grouse population that is in part on the ranch. It does two things for us. It's, it's an active working partnership so that they can help us improve what we are doing and at the same time, it expands our data sets. In 2005, a third party contractor helped in Canada put together a greater sage grouse habitat management plan. This plan provides us with guidelines that help us mitigate the impacts of development in the identified occupied and potential habitat on the ranch. The plan basically outlines temporal and spatial restrictions that we go by as we are doing the development or as we are planning the development. An example of a spatial restriction would be avoiding putting facilities within certain habitats that are critical to the grouse. An example of a temporal restriction would be the road closures that we enact for one of the leks on the NPR. This lek is in very close proximity to a main access route. We close that road during the peak lekking hours of the morning, which is 5 to 9 a.m. every day for two months in spring. Another part
part of Incana's environmental studies is annual surveys for raptor nests. What we're looking for in these surveys is active and inactive raptor nests. Um, because of the diversity of the topography on the NPR, we've got a lot of different species of raptors in a lot of different places that they could be nesting. Um, the ranch changes in elevation from about 6,500 feet to 8,500 feet. And habitats such as the canyon behind me would be a great place to look for peregrine falcons or golden eagles. Some of these more forested areas where we've got aspens or dug firs, you might find red-tailed hawks, cooper's hawks, or sharp-shinned hawks. After three years of doing surveys for the nests, what we're starting to see is the territory patterns showing up. This gives us an idea of where we would need to look for raptors before we, say, built a location or moved a rig in. We don't want that kind of activity to be detrimental to the nesting attempts of these species. So we can't predict exactly where those birds will nest in the landscape year by year, but we can get a much better understanding of where those critical areas are that we need to check. Another important management practice in county uses on the NPR is hunting. We leave about 17,000 acres of the ranch open to public hunters every year. We also work in cooperation with the Division of Wildlife to host special interest hunts for youth and women. These hunts are primarily for elk and turkeys on the ranch. Incana provides all the facilities, all the food, and all the guides for these hunts. In addition to the terrestrial surveys that Incana does on the NPR, we also have several programs in place to monitor water quality. This is one of our 11 monitoring wells we have on the ranch. Uh, these are all here to set a baseline and for our water quality study. The program began in the fall of 2004. We've been doing quarterly monitoring since that date. We uh, do a water level gauge at each one of these monitoring wells. Our analysis uh, looking for PTEX, MTBE, metals, anions, general chemistry, bacteria. The purpose of this is, is just to establish a baseline and determine that uh, water quality remains constant and no changes are seen over the years. We have 21 stream locations, much like this one here within the 45,000 acres of North Parachute Ranch. The importance of gathering the data for the surface water sampling is to ensure that we don't have any effects due to runoff, stormwater controls, any issues along that line. We do some water sampling from 56 locations for chemical analysis, but we also do macroinvertebrate sampling. Macroinvertebrate sampling is basically a study of water bugs, of the kinds, the types, and the diversity. That gives us an indicator of the health of this system. It's also a really good indicator of the quality of the habitat for species like Colorado River cutthroat trout. In 2005, when Incana began the studies on the ranch, the Division of Wildlife sampled this branch of Parachute Creek. Uh, they actually found a population of Colorado River cutthroat trout. The DNA test came back that this population was 94% pure genetics, which means this is a population of conservation concern. Water is obviously an extremely important resource here in the West. These monitoring programs will allow us to determine if there are any impacts to the aquatic habitat now or in the future. This is our Meadow Fork Air Station. This has got a meteorological tower on it. It samples the air for particulate ozone, carbon dioxide, and uh, nitrous oxide. The purpose here is to test the air quality in the ranch. This system here does continuous monitoring and gives us uh, our day-to-day -day operations and through that we're able to see if there's any changes over time. The system is set up on uh, remote telemetry and uh, allows us to see the data via the internet. The meteorological data here has wind speed, wind direction, uh, temperature, barometric pressure and a rain gauge uh, which gives us our precipitation for the uh, meadow here. Uh, we also have an air quality station up on top of the mountain it gives us our background. What makes the Encana program on the NPR so unique is really the commitment and the amount of financial dedication that has gone into these programs. We've got a great team of diverse people who are working together constantly to come up with innovative and better ways to develop the energy resources.